talk a little bit about the need for marketing and understanding marketing, branding, because you just said a million books are being published a year. So that's great. And it's a great opportunity that our stories are getting out there. But because of the just sheer number of, con of amount of content, let's not even get into video content. It will take us 20 lifetimes to just watch what came out this week um, <laughs> alone. That's right. um, but on the book side or just on the story side alone, without marketing, and this plays for both screenwriting, for, for novel writing, and for filmmaking, the understanding of marketing and branding to get eyeballs on your book, on your product, on your story is more vital than ever before. And I think I find that even mediocre writers who understand marketing and branding go a lot farther than brilliant writers who have no understanding about it. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. And uh, I, I wish I had your speech you just gave to to show all of my my author clients who whose books we publish mm -hmm. because i give them the same speech and and i you know if they're not willing to market they're not going to be the ones that are visible i mean the, the speech that i always give is that sales depends on marketing and there is no direct relationship between marketing and sales there is no magic formula but we one thing for sure is that a book needs visibility if somebody somebody's going to buy it. They've got to see it. And so visibility is directly related to sales because in the absence of visibility, there will be no sales. You've got to make it visible. And uh, the formula is, you know, some advertising agents, agencies talk about is impressions. And they say that you need at least four or five impressions before somebody will think about buying your product. So that's why in the slick magazines, you, you see ads, you know, full page ads for BMW or Hermes or, um, you know, Jose Cuervo tequila. It's not because there's a direct relationship between you see a BMW ad and you run out and buy a BMW. It's because you have a lasting impression from seeing an expensive ad in these magazines. And that's number one. And then you see a billboard with a BMW on it. And then you watch one go by uh, enviously, and then you you read about one on Facebook that somebody just bought. And you, you, by the time you get up to four or five and you're needing a car, you're going to be tempted. You can't go to every showroom and look at every car. So chances are BMW is going to be up there in the, in the top, you know, whatever percentage of cars you look at. And the same is true as a book. They, they say you need five impressions. So Amazon ads, Facebook ads, um, blog site tours, uh, making a you know making a trailer for your book, anything you can think of doing. We have services that we offer authors too, and they're things that help you get reviews. One of the primary things on Amazon is getting at least twenty reviews, and once you've got twenty, to go for you know to for, go for a hundred reviews. Once you go for a hundred, you go for five hundred. One of my novels has. 400 reviews or something like that at this point. And that just means that the sales start getting serious. And they also say that, as I mentioned before, if, if you write three novels with the same character in them, you're much more likely to get a following because when somebody looks at it and they get intrigued, they think, oh, and here's two others. So if I like this one, I can come back and read a couple of others. People like to do that. They like to binge read just as they like to watch, you know, binge watch Bosch or other TV series. Um, that's the way we're doing it now. If you if you like Madam Secretary, chances are you're going to wait until the whole season is available and and sit there and watch them on a weekend. More likely than tuning in the same time every week and doing it. And we're one of our big viewing changes is that we watch things on our own time as opposed to watching them on the network's time and. I'm not sure how much longer net commercial networks are going to last, given how much pressure we have on us for, for you know to use our time. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, not, I'm noticing that too because you know even even with even with mainline shows, I mean Netflix kind of ruined us with the binging situation and Amazon and everything else. So now, like when you're watching a network show, you're just like, oh, it's I gotta wait a whole year or whatever season to watch this whole thing play out. It's annoying. <laughs> it's well, an, not, it, not to mention having to go through the commercials. I mean, yeah. that's, it's just unbelievably annoying. I mean, I've even got to the point where 
you know, I, I like to I like to watch the news a lot during the day. So I'll get up at, you know, when I get up at five o'clock and and record CNN and I don't start watching it for a couple of hours. And that way I can go through the commercials because I I just don't have the patience to, you know, turn off the sound during every commercial. And and they're endless. You know, they seem like they last 10, 15 minutes before you get another 10 minutes of content. So that way of watching is, I think, not going to be around too many more years. I think we are going to be binge watching everything uninterruptedly. And of course, that means the economics of everything will change because the networks exist based on commercials. You can't blame them for for doing what they have to do to, to exist. But what the cables have done is come up with another financial pattern, you know, to keep them going. 